Hi, welcome. I'm Josh Cross, the board chair of the Travel Goods Association. Today, we are here with Jess McLaughlin. She is a photographer writer, and she's amazing, specializing in fly fishing photography. And um, we are delighted to have her here. Jess, welcome. Why don't you tell us a little about, about yourself? Thanks for the warm welcome, Josh. I'm a Montana-based, uh, as you said, photographer and writer based largely in the fly fishing travel industry. So spend a lot of time traveling with all the fun normal gear we bring along, plus cameras, plus fishing gear. And I've helped run camps around the world and spend most of my time on the road. How, how did you get into this? I started off as a writer and then found there was power in combining photography with the written word as well. Um, and then to be able to afford to travel and see the world, I started taking fishing jobs overseas and it's, 15 years later, spun up into this. What have you seen in the travel industry and any impacts that it has had in, in this, this space? Actually coming out of 2020, obviously we've seen many changes in the travel industry. I've been personally really excited to see like a an awareness and an excitement around slow travel. People wanting to go to a destination and just spend more time there instead of having a jam-packed itinerary. I've seen it quite a bit on the fishing side, interest in like indigenous communities and how we can support them and respect them through travel. You really focus in on things that perhaps a lot of people don't know about and you're bringing that to them via your photos, through your journey, through social media. How has the, the I, I guess, the way that you capture this shifted, especially with mm -hmm. social media and content creation? And then if you can bring brands into that, how can they then collaborate with people like you to help their brand and, and um, further what they're doing with people like you? I mean, I started this 15 years ago and we were still very much a print magazine based travel industry. Um, you know, even brands were still putting out like print brand books and some still are, thankfully, because I love a good print brand book. Um, but I'm seeing, as we all are, much more media shifting to social media, shifting to these short clips that can really immerse people into a destination or into a brand being used in that destination. And that's been eye-opening for me. I historically try to stay off my own social media because I find other people's stories much more interesting. I'd rather feature people that I meet in a destination or some unique food or something instead of just have my face on everything. And it's been a a good stretch for me the past few years to start uh, branding myself in those destinations a bit more. And people like that. I think people like having a, a face in the destination and a face with the brand. I, I had someone come to me in an airport last week and say, hey, I saw your review of a, a Yeti backpack in Bolivia this fall. And they turned around and showed me their Yeti backpack on their back. And so I think it's powerful for brands to be able to work with people actually out there doing the thing and in these destinations uh, and just get that kind of honest, organic content. What is it that that you're looking for when you, when you look for gear? Bottom line, I'm looking for gear that will hold up in the destinations I go. This fall, I had back-to-back -back shoots in Belize, Iceland, and then Bolivia in the Amazon. And you can imagine that's, that's a very stringent gear requirement for gear that can go back-to-back -to, -back to those three very different destinations. And I'm, I'm always working in the water, in the elements, because it's you're fishing, right? So you're outside in it. So I'm very picky on my gear. I worked in outdoor retail years ago, which thankfully gave me a primer on how to assess gear and how to find gear that can kind of hold up to my, my needs. I'm also notorious for uh, kind of jerry-rigging gear. My current camera bag is an insert from one bag in that Yeti Panga backpack. Um, and so definitely I I pick and choose over the years. How do manufacturing companies, these these companies that are building gear, you know, really good gear, right. how do they reach out? How do they collaborate and find a mutually beneficial partnership with, with content creators like yourself? It varies per brand. I typically start working with brands by saying, hey, let's either A, do a photo shoot in a destination. And that lets me get them content for their marketing while also getting to kind of experience and see how the brand works in whatever given environment we choose. Sometimes it's as simple as a brand saying, hey, can I send you a box full of stuff? And if you like it, will you take it out and give us feedback on it? Collaboration comes in many forms. It's always exciting for me as a, a content creator and as a traveler and an angler, if a brand says, hey, we want very honest, very visceral feedback. And then to see that feedback hopefully incorporated and then 
put into production. You know, the way production schedules are, maybe it's two years later, we see that line change. But it's exciting to see brands actually listen to the folks in the field. Talk about why brands should be looking at broadening their market reach with collaborators like yourself, content creators like yourself, and how that can help them. And it's important to be at the show to get that face-to-face face dis- face face discussion. And, you know, I always call it the handshake, even though there's not always an actual handshake. But I'm, I'm very old school, I know. And I like having an in-person discussion with people I'm going to be in business with, bottom line. So I think it's very useful for brands to kind of get to chat over coffee in the morning or something with content creators and see who they're going through that industry transition with, see what that content creator might be able to help them access that they have not been able to access. I've seen great success in my company because my business is largely so niche. I mean, fly fishing is a a very small world within a relatively small fishing world compared to the greater outdoor industry. And I've been able to work with some mainstream brands, um, Yeti, before they formally got into fishing. I did a fair amount of fishing work with them way back when. And being able to take them along to some of these destination photo shoots, and you come away with pretty specific assets, right? We're able to show the Yeti product in certain places, or Patagonia is another one I work with, where they do have a fly fishing line, but it's tiny compared to their mainstream line. The nice thing I think in my realm is fishing remains a fairly aspirational activity. Uh, A lot of people saw a river runs through it years back, or they see kind of this romance around, you know, fishing and being outside. And even if they pick up, you know, pick up a rod or a a non-fly rod, if they go out and pick up a cane pole with their granddad once a year, they still have kind of this fantasy is probably the wrong word, but this, this aspirational element to it. And that sells, right? For brands, that's a very powerful thing. There's a lot of power in collaboration, I think, with people like you using this in real Mm -hmm. life uh, scenarios. Now, as we gear up for the the 2024 Travel Goods Show, we're so excited to have you there. Tell us about your involvement in in the show. I'm a panelist on the the Gear for Travel Photographers. So I get to speak on two of my favorite subjects, which are gear and photography. And I, I was very happy to see y'all doing so many panels. I think panels are a really awesome way to get an audience involved and maintain interaction throughout the whole show. I'm also really excited um, for the networking and kind of the speed dating, if you will, just getting to meet people who, again, are not in my normal realm of, of interaction, probably. I know I work with some of the folks who are coming and I'm excited to catch up with them, but I think far more excited just to, to meet new people. Mm -hmm. what top five travel products do you always have with you? Like name the brands, name the type of products. What are the must haves for Jess? My list is probably wildly different from the other folks you're going to ask this question to. Um, I start out, obviously I bring all the camera gear and all the fishing gear and I need something to put that gear in. So Mm -hmm. I, that Yeti Panga backpack that I mentioned earlier um, is fantastic. Like I said, I pirated a camera bag insert to put in there so I can stay organized, but it's waterproof. And I found it's very hard to pickpocket. The fabric's very thick, so it's hard for people to slash into. And the zippers, you know, a good old waterproof zipper that's very hard to open and close. So it's it's a good go-to in places where thievery might be an issue beyond just being a good waterproof bag. I was literally swimming kilometers in a river in Brazil with it in October and it stayed waterproof. So I was like, okay, that box was checked. I'm impressed. I'm a big believer now in air tags, the good old Apple air tags and all my checked bags. I also put a big focus on just staying well because I'm always traveling for work. And if I get sick, I'm obviously not able to do good work for the client. So electrolytes, um, I always take when flying, bring a good water bottle. I've got a Yeti bottle that I love. And then element electrolytes are ones that I adore. And a good medical kit. I think it's something people overlook often um, because a lot of folks are traveling to, you know, first world destinations. So there probably is a good pharmacy or a good, you know, dock in the box, a little hospital right around the corner. Probably lastly, I don't know if it's really a product, but a good laptop with copies of Passport and all my travel docs stored in the cloud is huge. I've been on so many trips with other people who have either had a passport stolen or lost or something, and they're stuck with no no documentation, which can be resolved most of the time, but it's going to be a pain. So I'm a big fan of multiple copies 
everywhere I can put them. How can people find you? So if manufacturers or people um, who, who want to get in touch with Jess and, and collaborate in the future, how, how can they get in touch with you? My website is probably the best. It's jessmclaughlinmedia.com. The last name is a bear, so it will probably be in the text somewhere with this video. Um, and Instagram is a great place to follow along with the behind the scenes. I try and show the the good, the bad, and the ugly on my Instagram um, with travel, not necessarily with brands, but just showing the reality of of travel. Mm-hmm. Um, and I slept on the airport floor in Minneapolis last week, and that made it on Instagram. So it's that kind of thing. And that's, uh, again, Jess underscore McLaughlin underscore media. Are there any travel goods companies that you're looking forward to meeting? Away Luggage is one. I was able to look at one of those suitcases a few weeks ago that a friend had, and they raved so hard about it. It made me actually go on the website. So I was like, okay, these guys should be on my radar. And I'm always on the lookout for good travel clothing. So any kind of clothing manufacturers who make gear that, that holds up and hopefully looks a little cute, I'm game. Any other bits of travel related wisdom that you would mind imparting with mm-hmm. us as we for the show? Um, one of my top tips, like I said earlier, is just store documents, copies of documents in the cloud. Anytime I'm traveling with that pack or another pack, I never store things in exterior pockets. Mm. Um, even in airports, even in major good airports, I've just gotten in the habit of interior pockets always. Um, so people don't mess with my things. Thank you for, for that. And we look forward to learning a lot more in March uh, at, at the 2024 Travel Goods Show.